hmm, what kind of cassette should I buy for recording? Okay, let's go to eBay here. Yes, best cassette. I'm a slow typer. For recording. All right, well, you got here it's something type two audio cassette. Best for high energy music. All right, that's good. I like high energy. T type two. Lot A, type two, high bias, yes, yes, sealed. TDK, six, type one, what does this mean? Sony UX type two. Oh, a digital voice recorder, that's useful. 13 pre-recorded for blanks. Pre-recorded, pre-recorded. Peter, Paul, and Mary. Oh my God, Busty Springfield. Ah, I don't know what to buy. Ah. I think I can help that guy, because today on Exploring Limitations, we're going to take a look at the main three types of cassette formulas and ask, can you hear the difference? Here we go. The internet. Have you heard about it? There sure are a lot of opinions on it. Like for everything else in life, the internet is full of opinions on cassette types. And this gets even more muddled when you start to look at the differences between what consumers want and what creators want. I'm going to need you to stay engaged, use your ears, and do some guessing with me here in a little bit. But first... Wait, there are different cassette types? Good question. Yes, there are. And now we're going to talk about it. Nerd alert warning. Nerd alert warning. Okay, cassette types. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. All right, start here. This is a type 1 cassette. It is the most common. It's consumer grade. Most tapes you would have purchased are likely on this formula of tape. It uses ferric oxide, which is literally rust. Supposedly it has a darker, more bassy bias of sound uh, and less high-end. Uh, generally speaking, it uh, is definitely, from what you read on the internet, the lo-fi sound of tape. And guess what? It's brown. This is a Type 2 cassette. It's still common, but a little bit more expensive and regarded for recording enthusiasts and audiophiles. It uses a chromium dioxide formula, and it's supposedly better with the high end brighter while still retaining uh, some semblance of low end. Check out the black color of the tape. Can you see it? It's darker, it's not brown. That's the main way to tell the difference between type one and type two. This is a type four cassette. Very expensive. I paid $20 for this during an economic meltdown while unemployed for a single cassette to make this video. <laughs> it's highly regarded for a more permanent data storage. So for master tapes or for transferring a vinyl to, of something you love to a cassette. I can tell you just by holding it. This is the only metal cassette I've ever held. It is heavier. It uses a metal formula, a proprietary mixture of pure metal with no oxide. Check out the black color. I don't think I'd be able to tell this tape uh, apart from a type 2 cassette. Hey, you skipped number 3. Type 3 cassettes existed. They were a dual layer of tape with both ferric oxide and chrome dioxide. And it was known as, get this, ferrochrome. But these were available only for a short time. They didn't really last. I've seen videos of old uh, versions of these type 3 cassettes where the layers are coming off. So even if you acquired a brand new unwrapped one, there's a chance that it might fall apart in your hands. Uh, but people seem to really like them and there are some strange people out there. Before we get to our experiment, I have a caveat about the type 1 and type 4 cassettes. 
Without going into detail, this Tascam Porta 2 machine that I use to record everything is biased for Type 2 cassettes only without the ability to adjust it. That means it is pre-optimized for Type 2s with no way to change it. So it will be interesting to see if that's noticeable on the Type 1 and the Type 4. I just wanted to get that out of the way before I get yelled at in the comments. We're exploring limitations here, people. Now for some fun! I recorded the exact same music with the exact same settings on each of the cassette types. I changed nothing. Not even the volume because I heard that type 4s require more oomph and it'll be interesting if it comes out quieter. Now I'm going to play each one back and you have to guess which type of cassette it is. I will just call them A, B, and C for now. And here we go with cassette A. Now the next one, Cassette B. And the final one, Cassette C. Okay, that was cool. So do you have your answer in your head? Which is which? Here we go, I'm going to reveal them. Cassette A was a type two. Cassette B was a type one. And cassette C was a type four. So how did you do, did you nail it? Uh, for me, it was really interesting recording because uh, right off the bat, the Type 1 was uh, very lo-fi sounding, very bottom-end sounding. Uh, type 2, I'm already super familiar with. Uh, I would have EQ'd it differently, but I wanted to leave everything flat. And the Type 4 was uh, high. It was higher. You could definitely hear the highs, and it was definitely quieter. Very, very interesting uh, whatever it, they put in that metal uh, tape, it clearly takes a stronger uh, bias and magnets. A scientist out there is going to tell me why. So please, Mr. Scientist, let us know. And there you have it. It's different cassette types. Uh, ultimately, I got to go with the bang for your buck, and I'll definitely be sticking with type 2s for recording, probably type 1s for loops, and I will probably never purchase a Type 4 cassette again. I'm curious what your ears detected between the types. Let me know below. I would especially love to hear from non-musicians, if any are watching. Uh, to close the video, I'm going to play all three at the same time. Maybe that's the best formula. As always, peace and be good to each other.